everyone, this is Dr. Jawad from Total Health Wellness Center. What I'm going to talk about in today's video is how your brain function, how that affects your thyroid gland. Because everything, everything starts in the brain, okay? So let's start off, everything starts off in your hypothalamus. The, the hypothalamus is considered what's called the master gland. That sends a hormonal signal to your pituitary gland called thyroid releasing hormone, which your pituitary gland is still inside the brain. That sends a, a hormonal signal called thyroid release, I'm sorry, thyroid stimulating hormone to a butterfly gland in your neck called your thyroid gland. Now your thyroid gland releases two forms of higher thyroid hormone. One, T4, which is 93% inactive, and T3, which is only 7% active. Now the inactive, 93% inactive T4 gets converted to active T3, 60% in your liver, 20% in your gut, and 20% in your target tissue, okay? However, if you have poor brain function, this is where you're not going to be producing enough signal for the thyroid hormone. Okay, so again, everything starts in the hypothalamus. Now the hypothalamus, the master gland, that has a neuron called the paraventricular neurons. Now the paraventricular neurons, those are sensitive to T T4 and T3. So what happens, again, everything works in a negative feedback loop, so when your T4 and T3 hormones kind of get lower, it sends a signal to the hypothalamus to release me more and more and more and more, okay? Those paraventricular neurons are sensitive to two main awesome neurotransmitters called dopamine and serotonin. I'm sorry, they're hormones called dopamine and serotonin. Now, dopamine, this is involved with like motivation and focus. Serotonin is, again, it's related to happiness, sleep, digestion. Now, serotonin, only 20% is produced in your brain, but 80% of serotonin is produced in the gut. Okay, so this is where the gut, your proper gut function, has a big impact on serotonin production. So if you like have a bad diet, um, dysbiosis, leaky gut, malabsorption, you're not producing enough serotonin. Because serotonin is also, most of the serotonin is produced while you sleep. In the daytime, you have two different types of um, nervous system control. In the daytime, typically is your sympathetic, which is your fight or flight, that gets you going. But while you're resting, this is where the parasympathetic, your rest, digest, and repair system kicks in and, and is dominant. So while you're sleeping, this is where the most of your serotonin is produced. Okay, and this is why decrease in serotonin affects your sleep. So what happens when we get decreased serotonin and dopamine? Okay, how do we get it? What can we do about it? So there's three types of stresses, physical, emotional, and chemical. Physical stress, this will burn out your dopamine and serotonin productions. This can be very active. I mean, if you're very, very actively uh, active, uh, physical, this is like your ditch diggers or just, you know, you're just really, really running around all day long and you feel burned out. Okay, this could also be passive. This could be your couch potatoes doing absolutely nothing on the weekend. It could actually zap the serotonin and dopamine production. Because remember, dopamine is a, is a key hormone in motivation. Okay, and serotonin is a key motivation in um, like happiness and sleep. Emotional, are you, do you have a lot of personal stress? Okay, I have a lot of patients who come in who their dopamine and the serotonin productions are zapped out because they are just in a very, either a bad relationship, okay, or just a lot of emotional stress, somebody died, or something's happening in their personal life, which again, is affecting that brain. Okay, or work, are you overworked? But the main thing that um, they'll affect your dopamine and, uh, dopamine and uh, serotonin production is your diet. Now, fluctuations in blood sugar, hypoglycemic, hyperglycemic, again, pancreatic overload, too much insulin, too much glucagon in your system will affect the gut, will affect the brain. Okay, so blood sugars will affect, is a big factor in decreased serotonin and dopamine production. Mainly the diet of B vitamins. Now, if you have... Um, if you have poor conversion, if you have poor uh, hydrochloric acid, where you're not actually digesting and absorbing your B vitamins, again, B vitamins are needed because they convert the amino acids, tyrosine and tryptophan into, we need tyrosine for dopamine, and we need tryptophan for serotonin. Okay, so this is where if you have a, either bad gut function, malabsorption, leaky gut, uh, celiac disease, or just, I always want to say the standard American diet, this is where the, that poor diet is going to affect the tyrosine and tri uh, tryptophan, which is not going to convert dopamine and serotonin, 
So this is where this is going to affect this in a very, very negative way. So this is where I always encourage a lot of my patients to, if you want to fix your brain, fix your gut. Your gut is considered the second brain. So this is why, again, brain function affects thyroid function. I hope this video helps. My name is Dr. Juwan. Thanks for watching.